Racism has unfortunately been a recurring theme in American history. From the time of its founding, the United States has seen unspeakable evil within its borders. From the lynching of thousands of innocent black Americans to the genocide that reduced the Native American population from 10 million to a mere 300,000. Racism has always been and may always be a problem in the United States. But the more we learn about what others have gone through, the more we can treat each other in a way that heals the divisions of the past. While we have a general understanding of how racism has plagued the United States, there's still a lot most Americans don't know about our messed up history. I want to fix that. So today we'll be discussing the stories of American racism no one talks about. Our first story comes primarily from the 19th century, when residential assimilation schools for Native Americans were fairly widespread across the United States. These schools sought to disconnect abducted Native Americans from their culture and assimilate them into European American customs, subjecting them to abuse and neglect along the way. The most notorious of these schools was the Carlisle Indian Industrial School, which was founded by a veteran of the Indian Wars and dedicated to the motto, kill the Indian, save the man. The students were frequently subjected to sexual abuse, malnutrition, and forced labor, and were forced to assume new names and abandon their own customs lest they be whipped or beaten as punishment. Upon being assimilated, Native Americans were often returned to their tribes and shunned by their own communities for abandoning their culture. Former students often struggled with depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and substance abuse following their time at these schools frequently resulting in their suicides. Next, we have the Tulsa Massacre, in which a white mob sought to lynch a black man after being falsely accused of and arrested for sexually assaulting a white teen in 1921. This took place in a community within the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma, known as Black Wall Street, one of the most prosperous black communities in America. When several black Americans arrived at the prison to defend the accused from the mob, the situation developed into a riot in which at least 26 black Americans were murdered, though modern estimates often reach as many as 300 innocent deaths. The once thriving black community was destroyed by the mob, resulting in the displacement of 10,000 black Americans and nearly $2.3 million worth of property damage in 1921, more than 35 million in today's money. No convictions were ever made for the riots and photos from the massacre wouldn't emerge until the early 70s. Then there's Leo Frank, the Jewish director of a Georgia pencil factory accused of the brutal murder of one of his employees, 13-year-old Mary Fagan, in 1913. Historians almost universally agree that Fagan's murderer was actually fellow employee Jim Conley, a black worker whose race played as significant a role in his trial as Frank's ethnicity did in his. Nevertheless, Conley's legal team, supported by the local press, was more successful in framing Frank than Frank's was in defending him. He was sentenced to death but upon a successful appeal to the governor, his sentence was commuted to life in prison. An incensed mob then abducted Frank from his cell before lynching him in Fagan's hometown of Marietta. No one was ever charged for his murder. Next, we have Emmett Till, a 14-year-old black American visiting family in Mississippi accused of harassing a white grocery store owner. Though his accuser would later retract her testimony, Till was abducted by two men for his alleged crime. They drove him out to a barn, beat him, mutilated him and murdered him before throwing his body into a river. His murderers were found not guilty by an all-white jury. Then there's the Red Summer, a period in 1919 following the First World War in which hundreds of innocent black Americans all across the country were murdered by white workers who resented the new opportunities granted to them during the post-war slump. Next, we have the Tuskegee Experiment, in which more than 100 black sharecroppers in Alabama were killed as the result of deliberate neglect by the U.S. government. The victims were among 300 other sharecroppers in a 40-year-long experiment testing the effects of syphilis if left untreated. They were kept unaware of the intent of the experiment, only told that they were being treated for bad blood. The experiment lost its funding in 1972, decades after the widespread distribution of penicillin. Up next, we have the Los Angeles Chinese Massacre of 1871, in which 19 Chinese immigrants were lynched by a white and Latino mob amid rumors that two rival Chinese mobs had killed a policeman and rancher. It was the largest mass lynching in American history, and all convictions against the mob were overturned. Finally, we have the Freedom Summer Murders, in which three civil rights workers, James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Schwerner, were stopped for speeding in Philadelphia, Mississippi in 1964. 
They were arrested and held for several hours before the KKK in cahoots with the Neshoba County Sheriff's Department and the Philadelphia Police Department abducted them and killed them before throwing their bodies into an earthen dam. Only one of the perpetrators served a sentence for his involvement more than 40 years after the murders. These stories are sobering, as they should be, but we shouldn't let them hold us back. Instead, we need to remain educated about the history of racism in the U.S. and how it continues to affect us and our communities. The more we learn and understand about the past, the better we can do in the future. And that's one of the many reasons that history is so important. Thanks for watching.